at the moment, I'm a little bit addicted to Call of Duty Warzone. It's kind of filling the gap in my gaming lineup, and every time I boot it up and I jump in, it's giving me these good rounds and these exciting moments, which is what I'm really looking for when I play video games. Over the last few days since the game has launched, I've been noting down the places that I've been dropping into, which have been giving me good loot. Obviously in a battle royale, surviving the first few minutes on the ground is that little bit harder because of the amount of players in some of the areas, so having better gear is going to give you a better chance of surviving those frantic first moments. So in this video, I'm going to highlight to you some of the best drop locations on the map where you stand a chance of picking up the best loot in the game. So before we dive into that list of drop locations, I wanted to quickly point you in the direction of where I got this extended info about some of the locations. The Call of Duty team released a TAC map on their official website on the day of Warzone launching, and on there, all the different locations are marked on the map. So there's loads of points of interest that you can look at, and across all of these, across all the zones and sectors of the map, there is a meter included that gives you a general idea of what tier of loot you're going to be finding if you choose to drop in that location, or, or at least the chance of finding that tier of loot in that location. Now these meters, they go up in steps of 20, so that matches the number of loot tiers in the game. Grey, green, blue, purple and gold. But obviously that doesn't mean that every time you drop at these locations that you are going to find loot of that tier. It's more of a rough guide, if you know what I'm saying. You're going to find common floor loot in that location. You're going to find some loot crates with slightly higher rarity than that. You may then find loot crates of the rarity of that location. And you may even find some higher rarity items than what is indicated by the meter. So don't go believing that you're definitely going to get a legendary M4 every time you drop into the hotspots in downtown because... That's simply not going to happen. There is an element of RNG involved here, of course, because it is a Battle Royale game mode. The TAC map has given us some great ideas of where we can drop and areas that will likely increase your chances of finding high-tier loot locations, but overall just remember that things are still random when it comes to the loot table in Warzone. Okay then, here we go. Looking to the north zone of the map first of all, there aren't too many high-tier loot spots over here. There are only two that I can find on the TAC map. Part of the reason for this is because the north of the map is far less densely populated with points of interest and buildings than the south of the map. Warzone is quite severely unbalanced when you look at how the loot could spawn in terms of tiers. However, there are a couple of places you can go for and, well, they're right next to each other. Over to the northeast of the sector, you're going to find the Cask River Quarry Zone, Within this, there are two areas that are listed as Tier 5 Legendary, and those are numbers 61 and 62, Rail Yard Bridge and Shipping. And as I said conveniently, they are pretty much right next to each other. The location features lots of warehouses for decent cover when you're landing, and if you're a fan of Ground War, then you've probably become familiar with this location anyway. If you land at either of these places, it is just a short run to the other one if you fail to find a weapon that's high tier enough for you. Next, we're going to take a look at the second sector, the west side of the map. This includes the International Airport, which is pretty large, Storage Town, and Atlas Superstore. These three locations all feature very high densities of loot spawn points. If you put to one side their rarity, that is, there's lots of common, uncommon, and rare places here too. So the chances of you landing and securing weapons, at least, is very high. That said, because of the density, you are going to find lots of other people dropping here, so be prepared for gunfights almost as soon as you've landed. Within the international airport sector, there are three tier 5 loot spawn points marked on the TAC map. Numbers 4, 10 and 11. Number 4 is the control tower complex. The administration building at the bottom that wraps around it, that can be accessed by a couple of doors or by smashing in windows, but the control tower itself, that's currently a very hot spot to drop because I think of just how easy it is to spot it when you're parachuting in, and you can get right through the massive broken windows to get into the control tower at the top. Numbers 10 and 11, they correspond to the main terminal building and the terminal parking structure. 
Outside the terminal, on the air side, you're going to find a military camp that's been set up on the tarmac, and that sits either side of the destroyed plane, so there's lots of tents down there that you can work through to find loot. And then within the main terminal building, you're going to find a pretty busted up scene that's ideal for more close range gunfights. So SMGs and assault rifles, they will pretty much be the order of the day here. That's if you can find any. Lots of opportunities to hold angles and fight off enemy squads. And then the other tier 5 loot location over here in the west is Storage Town. Interestingly, Atlas Superstore, even though it's still a really good location to drop, is only marked as a tier 4 maximum location. Although, as I've said, because things are random, that doesn't necessarily mean everything there is going to be tier 4. You could find some tier 5 stuff. But I thought this would be a tier 5 location because of the very high density of loot spawn locations, but that doesn't appear to be the case. Storage Town, however, is another dense location that's full of near identical storage units that house plenty of loot crates and floor loot that you can get into some instant fighting with. Because of the size of the location, you are going to find that lots of people again will drop here, and likely you and your squad will find it quite difficult to secure the entire location for yourself, at least to begin with. Once other squads move off, you might be able to secure more loot as you move through. Moving on to the third sector now, moving over to the southwest of the map, there are four different tier 5 loot locations here, and the first one is number 14, Verdansk train station. Similar to the International Airport, this is a very recognisable hotspot from the air, and that makes it a very obvious target for squads when the round is starting. I've been here a few times, and I have found a few high-tier weapons from different crates. The platform area is quite open, and gunfights with players bobbing and weaving between pillars, that can make it quite a bit harder to navigate, and you probably will take some damage here, so if you want more cover, then stick to the main building, and the smaller buildings to the north of the tracks. The second location is number 9, Verdansk Hospital. The interior of the hospital is pretty much chaotic. There are corridors to navigate, there's reception areas, there's a main foyer, kitchens, cafeteria, and that's just on the ground floor. And then the first floor, the room above that, you're going to find lots more rooms that you can go into, more corridors, and you can get out onto the roof where there's a helipad that can be used for landing. This is a large landing location and it can hold plenty of players at the start of round, so be prepared for gunfights if you choose this spot. The third location in the southwest is number 41. It's the apartment complex, which is a trio of buildings on the eastern edge of the Barraquette Promenade. There's a metro entrance here at the moment is fully sealed. That does provide you some cover outside of the main buildings, but you could get stuck down there, as well as it being right next to the Ferris wheel, which in itself is a tier 4 loot location, so you do have plenty of options here if you wanted a slightly wider net to land on. And then the fourth point is number 35, that's the gas station, bank and apartment blocks. On the northern side of the promenade, quite close to the location we were just talking about, so again you could probably run here if you dropped and things were looking a little bit too hot, but it is a very dense area of buildings. It's going to provide you a lot of loot box spawn locations, plenty of floor loot, and of course, running into gunfights all over the place. You'll probably be able to pick up a bunch of loot from players that have been killed. You're in an urban fighting location, so if you need to disappear around a corner for some cover, there are plenty of routes that you can take here. Then we move on to the fourth sector. This is the big boy, Central and South. It includes the stadium, downtown and TV station. In this sector, there are six different points of interest marked as tier 5 loot locations, so of all of the sectors that you can drop in in Warzone, this is the one with, on average, the highest chance of rewarding you with high tier loot. At the same time, however, it is arguably the smallest and most densely populated area of the map, so dropping here it's going to be a bit like dropping in Tilted Towers on the old Fortnite map. Things are going to get a bit chaotic and a bit messy, but as long as you're confident in landing somewhere that you know there are a few loot box spawns, then you should be okay. The first point is number 3, BCH4 TV Station. This point is set much further out from the downtown location, which we will talk about in a minute, and that means dropping here is likely going to give you a bit of a quieter start to the round. 
That being said, it is still a fairly large location, not really surrounded by much else. So I can't guarantee that it won't be popular, because it probably will be, but there's plenty of loot in here across the floors that you can move through. Then we have the second, third and fourth points. They all line up in sort of a string and they are right next to each other. Numbers 34, 35 and 36. The Entertainment District, Art Museum and Art District. Now I'd say these locations, because of their distance from each other, they represent the highest loot drop density on the entire map. And they sit in the shadow of the Verdant Stadium, which is a huge landmark in its own right. So it's going to make this place one of the hottest drops that you can find in Warzone. These three locations all fall into a dense urban location. There's lots of streets for you to cross, other buildings that you can enter, and generally just hundreds of lines of sight that you could be shot from. So if you drop here, drop with caution because you're probably going to get spotted pretty fast. And then to add to that, the fifth and the sixth points, numbers 41 and 47, they are Broadcast and Burger Town and the Financial District. Again, these are nestled right within the downtown location and they're surrounded with plenty of other buildings and places you can go. And they are right next to the other numbers, 34, 35 and 36 that we just spoke about. So things are going to get pretty hectic here. Loot is going to be all over the place. And lastly, we have sector number five, the eastern side of the map. This includes the port location, the prison complex, and Krovnik farmlands. There are three total five-tier loot locations in the east. That makes it quite a bit quieter than the central and southern section that we just spoke about. So if you're looking for a relatively calmer start to your rounds, then I'd suggest going over here. First, we have number 74, Gulag Battlements. This is the entrance and prison exterior. The whole prison location is extremely high in its loot density, with multiple layers going down, providing you with ample opportunity to loot up and get some good gear. But the external areas, they appear to offer the best chance of finding high tier loot. The Bailey, as it's called, that features a helipad, fuel tanks, trucks and missile batteries and is basically a staging area for all the different groups to come together and fight it out at the start of a round. Secondly, we have number 58, the Vacant Location, which is a classic Modern Warfare map. So if you've played that game before, you're going to know exactly what you're doing here. So navigating around the interior and the exterior, that's going to be super easy and loot is pretty plentiful, so it's a good drop point. And lastly, number 11, Cask Bridge. This crosses over the frozen river that would be flowing from the dam that's further up from the map, and it doesn't provide you with a lot of cover despite being a tier 5 loot location. It's kind of just out in the middle of nowhere. I found it to be quite a good drop recently because it's a little bit quieter, but because of the lack of cover, people can see you from a bit further around. So you kind of always need to be ready for action. So there you have it. Plenty of high tier loot spawn locations for you to hit up in Warzone. Remember, there is no guarantee that you're always going to find the gun that you're looking for every time you drop in. But most of these spots feature high densities of loot spawns of all rarities. And that's going to increase your chances of gearing up with better stuff. Better stuff means more gunfights and more kills. More kills means more fun rounds with your friends and hopefully more fun rounds turn into victories. Thanks very much for watching. Leave me a rating and a comment. And if you could share this video with your friends, maybe they need some help looking for high tier loot, then that would be awesome. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.